Today we're going to be installing a new receiver and pair of speakers in a 2008 Ford Escape. There are a few tools that we're going to need for today's installation. We'll need a Phillips screwdriver, a small flat blade screwdriver, a 7mm socket, 7 32nd socket, a trim panel tool, a T30 Torx driver, and an 8mm open end wrench. When you buy your gear from Crutchfield, you'll also receive a copy of our master sheet with detailed instructions. The very first thing we'll need to do before removing the factory radio is to take out any CDs, and then we can set the parking brake and move to the front to disconnect the negative battery cable. Now we're ready to start disassembling the dash. We're gonna start up top at the upper vent trim panel, taking our trim panel tool and working our way around the top corners and prying the clips loose. With the vent panel released, We'll set it on the top of the dash because it's important that we don't disconnect the airbag harness. Once we've moved this panel out of our way, we'll have access to two 7mm screws. With those removed, we can move down to the lower trim panel. We like to move the shifter out of our way to gain access to this panel. Remove the shift lock release cover, depress the shift release, and slide the shifter back into its lowest position. Then we can get our trim panel tool in there and pry out the lower dash trim panel. There are a few harnesses on the back side of this panel that we'll have to disconnect. And then we'll have access to two more seven millimeter screws holding in the bottom of the receiver. After removing those screws, certain versions of the factory radio can slide out as a complete assembly with the climate controls. Since this version has the factory navigation, there are a few more steps. We'll pry out the dash panel around the radio and see that the climate controls are actually attached to this panel with four Torx screws. We can remove the climate controls separately and leave them in the vehicle because we'll be reconnecting the controls to our new dash kit. With the last panel out of the way, we can remove the four screws securing the radio at each corner of the unit and it should slide right out. We'll have to disconnect the wiring harness and the antenna connection from the back. All right, now that the factory radio has been removed, we're ready to start working on our dash kit and receiver. With this Metra dash kit, we'll start off by taking the doubled in brackets and snapping them to the inside edge of the radio housing. With those in place, we can slide the new receiver through the back of the dash kit. It will lock into place and then we can take our trim ring and just snap it in from the front edge all the way around the receiver. Finally, we'll use the included screws to secure the brackets in place. Now that our dash kit's been installed, we're ready to move on to our wiring harness. In this case, the harness will be pretty straightforward. Just match each wire, color for color, and the only exception will be the parking brake wire. This is the long lime green wire on the receiver side of the harness and it will be connected to the red and white wire on the vehicle adapter side of the harness. When making our wiring connections, we like to use posi connectors because they screw together and make a quick and secure connection that you don't need to worry about once everything is back inside the dash. With our new harness connected and the dash kit attached, we're ready to install everything back into the vehicle. We'll reattach the climate controls with those four torque screws, plug in the wiring harness, and then the entire dash kit assembly will slide in in one piece. All of the trim panels will snap back into place, and when we're sure that we've plugged in all of our harnesses, we're ready to reconnect the negative battery cable and test our new stereo. The receiver will light up, and we can tune to a radio station and hear that we've connected everything properly. So we've tested the radio, everything worked great, and now we're ready to move on to door speakers. To remove the door panel, we'll start up top at the sail panel. We can pry this panel loose with our trim panel tool. It should pop right off. Then we'll move over to our door release handle. There's a screw cover there that's hiding a T30 Torx screw. Just pry the cover off and remove that screw. Now we'll move down to the door pull cup. There's a Phillips screw in the bottom of the door pull that we'll take out, and then we'll be ready to remove three more screws from the sides of the door panel. One in the front and two in the back. With all these screws removed, we'll take our trim panel tool and pry off the door panel. Working our way around the outside edge of the panel, we'll pry all the clips loose until the door panel is free. Before pulling the panel off, we'll disconnect the door release cable 
and two more wiring harnesses from the inside of the door panel. With the panel off, we'll have access to the factory speaker. It's secured to the door frame with four screws. Remove those screws and the speaker will be free. Just unplug the harness on the back side. Now we're ready to install our new speakers in the front doors. We'll start with the speaker wiring harnesses. Take those and slide them onto the speaker terminals. The large terminal is the positive and the small terminal is the negative. Now plug the new harness into the factory wiring and secure the new speaker into the door frame using the same four screws that we just removed. Now we'll go ahead and test the new speaker before putting the door panel back on. We can hear it and see it's moving, so now we're ready to put the panel on the same way we took it off. We put everything back together, so that wraps up today's installation. I hope that answers one of the most popular questions we get at Crutchfield. Yes, you can install a new receiver and speakers yourself. If you have any questions, please give Crutchfield a call.